Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game. With my first impressions on Scythe by Stonemaier Games. Now for those of you who don't know, let me just say a bit about what the game actually is. So it's all set in this 1920s post-war different reality, whereby technology has advanced differently. So you have all these mechs and it's all much more kind of cyberpunky combined with that um, 1920s feel. It's definitely an interesting and different setting for the game. Now what is the game itself? Well, it is dubbed as a 4x game but I think I would kind of dispute that slightly. But maybe I'd say 3, 3.5 because there's not really much exploration in this game. The only place that any exploration is occurring is with the encounters that you have. And it doesn't feel like that's much in the way of an exploration. You know, you're not revealing more of the map. You're not changing the map in any way by doing that exploration. All you're doing is turning over a card, making a decision that might give you some resources, etc. It's just a bit story led decision making. There's no real exploration in my opinion. You know, I'll, I'll allow maybe a 0.5 for the fact that you turn over a card. So what does the rest of the game encompass? Well, the start of the game you need to pick your faction, which is basically your colour of pieces that have a special ability. Now, one of the ones um, allows you to walk on water, one allows you to complete specific objectives multiple times, one allows you to do the same action multiple times. Because normally you would select an action and then you can't do that action again, you'd have to s select a different action than that one on the following turn. So once you've then selected your faction, you then also select um, another board that's kind of your abilities board. So this is your actions board where you're selecting what actions you do. And there's not a specific one for each faction. So you're randomly gonna have a different combination of this actions board. And all the actions boards are different. The way they're different is they all have the same actions on them, but you have a top action and a bottom action on these boards. And when you perform an action, you can perform the top and the bottom or either or, it's up to you. So the fact that you have a different combination of what those top and bottoms are mean that one time playing, you might be able to do two things that you really want to do together a lot of the time and they're on that same action and another time playing, you won't have that. So you have to kind of adjust your strategy based on how that board gives, which is a very good idea. It, means that the game does change from play to play and of course recently has been announced there is an expansion with two new factions I don't know if that's going to come with two different action boards or if they've already covered all the different kind of permutations of combinations that there are but still two new factions will mean two new special abilities to mix up those strategies a bit now, how does the game actually work? So once you've got your board, you then put out some workers and it's all this hexagon kind of map. And each of those hexagons represents a territory and the different territories provide different resources, um, be it people, metal, food, wood. Um, I think there was another one, but I, oh, oil was the other one. So, you know, they'll produce a different resource. And to produce that resource is an action. You won't just automatically have a production phase each turn. You will specifically say, right, well, I want to put my efforts into producing resources this turn. I want to put my efforts into buying resources this turn. Now, when you get resources, they don't sit in front of you. They stay on that map. They're carried around by your workers. So if your workers get defeated, you'd lose the resources, which is an interesting aspect of battle. It means that you can gain resources by battling and by expanding your territory and taking over more territories not only are you able to gain different and more resources you're also then able to deprive your opponents of resources and take the resources that they've already spent time building up 
So that all is very, fairly interesting. The way the turn will actually work is you'll select your action and that could be to move, it could be to produce resources as I say, it could be to trade, um, and it could also be to enhance your military strength. So there is a lot going on in this game. And what, how the game actually works is you'll take a turn, you'll select your action, you'll do your action, then it goes around the table, goes around the table, goes around the table. At certain points in the game, you will place a star that equals, that happens when you've met a kind of condition and anything you're doing in this game pretty much eventually will result in a star. You could be increasing your military and you get your military to a certain level, you get a star out. If you get all your people out, you get a star. You know, everything you can do will generate stars and those stars then cause the end condition. I think it's uh, when someone has all six of their stars out, that then ends the game. Now, that doesn't mean they've won the game. No, the person who wins the game is the person who has the most money at the end. And you will gain additional money at the end of the game, depending on other criteria you've met and how popular you are, which is an interesting mechanic as well. There are a lot of interesting mechanics in this game. That is for certain. There's a lot of innovation going on here. So the way the end scoring will work is any coins you have in front of you, they're points that you've gained throughout the game by just gaining money. But also, as I say, you'll have your popularity. And depending on where you are in popularity will mean that you get a certain number of victory points for each of your stars, areas controlled, people on the map, that kind of thing. Then whoever has the most coins, once you've gone through all of that, is the winner. So as well as all of this, there are objective cards that you can try and meet, and that's just another way of getting a star out. It doesn't actually gain you anything in game, it doesn't gain you any victory points, except for the fact that stars are worth victory points at the end, depending on how popular you are. So this is the thing, a lot of the choices you can make when you're going around the map and you hit these encounter cards, and there's a fixed number of these in each game. So it's very much, you wanna to get to them first because they're always pretty much good, but what you tend to have is they have three options on them. And you'll have one option that is give up nothing to gain something. You'll have a middle option that's give up a little to gain a little. And you'll have a bottom option that's like give up a lot to gain a lot. And that gaining a lot tends to be sacrificing popularity. Basically, you be a bad, mean guy and the populace do not like you for it. As a result, that means that you gain more immediately, but then at the end of the game, your popularity is going to be lower, so you'll gain less victory points there. There is so much going on in this game, it's really hard to get across. But hopefully I've given you a vague idea of how it all works. The one thing I haven't yet talked about is combat. So as you're moving around this board and generating more and more income that allows you to build more stuff and do more stuff, you will encounter other units. Now it's important to note workers do not fight each other, but units do. So the units that you're putting out, you have your starting unit that's kind of you as a commander, and then you also get mechs that you're able to build, which are really nice and they enable you to move around the map the most. When you have those in a space, you then have a fight. Now fights inside have a deterministic factor which is quite nice and interesting during the game you can collect combat cards that give you a, an amount of combat on them this is probably the biggest aspect of luck in this game because the cards range from one to five which is a pretty big deal when combat's concerned you know if you just keep getting ones and someone else keeps getting fives they're always going to be better at combat but you can win the game without getting into combat at all. So it's, although that can make a difference if you're going the combat route, you don't have to go that route and take that risk with luck. So as well as you choosing to play up to two of these cards, you can also use your military might. And you have a dial that you set in secret and everyone knows what your maximum military is because that's given on the board. You know, you've been increasing your military strength. They can see that. And when you then use that military strength, that goes down. So it takes you further away from getting to that star point there. But you could use zero and just use your cards. It, there's a lot of options there in the combat. So there's a lot going on in this game. And I guess I can see why this game is so popular. 
I mean, the, the thing I liked most about it was how upgrades worked. The whole buying of buildings, I was a bit, yeah, it's just buying buildings, buying mechs, yeah, it's just buying mechs, all the actions. You know, these all felt very typical euro -y worker placement-y type things. But then this way the upgrades work in that when you choose to do an upgrade, you not only improve one of your top level abilities by making it so that you gain more when you do that, you then move the cube off of that, revealing what you're gonna gain, and covering up the cost on one of your lower abilities. So I found that really nice, really elegant, and that's kind of what I focused on when I played actually, because I like that idea and that mechanic so much. Um, but yeah, as I say, uh, I can see why it's popular, because there is so much going for it with all these different mechanics, and I did enjoy the game. I like how all these mechanics work. I liked that it was this epic experience that with this lovely artwork, but okay, it has that typical Euro thing that the theme doesn't feel directly connected to the gameplay necessarily. It's probably better than a lot of Euros, but it's still a bit dry on the thematicness to, for me personally. I can see why it's popular, but I really don't get why it is as popular it is. I don't understand the hype that there is. I would not say that this is a top 10 game for me, for example. And maybe it's just I don't feel the same way other people do, and people who are much more Euro-focused will probably enjoy this much more. But for me, I would say it was a good game. It's definitely top 100 material, don't get me wrong, probably in the top 50. But all the hype around it is as if this is the best game ever, you know, top what top game of all, or at least a top 10. And I just didn't get that feel. I mean, it kind of dragged on a bit with the way it built up. It was very much, okay, we're each on our own individual island, not really interacting. And it took maybe half an hour for us to kind of build to a point where you could get off your own little island and start having interactions. It was very slow churning towards that and building up towards that. And that's part of what put me off. And then you've got the fact that it is such a heavy, complicated game. There's no clear way to play this game. There's, I think maybe if you've played it a ton of times, you'll start to kind of get an idea of strategies, what you should do first, what based off what other people are starting out doing, you should maybe do, or based off your missions. But sitting down to play this for the first time, it was very much, there's all these options of ways you can go about trying to win, to gain victory points, to gain these stars. And it was like, um, well, what, what should I do? And there is no clear answer. A lot of people will like that, but for me, it kind of just let me, it, it had me kind of floundering, unsure what to do. And I kind of just went, well, I, uh, I, I guess I'll build towards doing this. And I never managed to get a single star out in the game we played. So, okay, we were playing a slightly shorter game, um, but even then that was like two hours long. So this is a very long game as well. And that's part of the reason that it kind of falls down on me because I struggle to get long games to the table. I've got a few of them as it is, and they so rarely get played that for me, a game being long is very much a turnoff. And a game of Scythe is gonna take you three, four hours. I mean, we were playing with five people, that will slow it down. Maybe it's better with fewer people. And obviously I can't comment on how it'd play with two. Well, I say I can't comment. I can't give an informed comment. My opinion is that it will play perfectly fine with two and it will just make it quicker. Potentially it will be a better game as a two player game. However, the lack of then worrying about lots of different people coming after you, it's probably gonna be at its best around three or four. With five, as I say, it starts to slow down a bit. So yeah, um, it was a good game, I enjoyed it, not one I'm planning on getting, I just wouldn't get it to the table enough. There was just, it just felt a bit dry, a bit flavorless to me. And yeah, I don't understand that hype. So that is my thoughts on Scythe. Um, the one thing I do want to just quickly add, 
it was actually a retail um, version that we were playing and I want to say component wise it was great you know all the wooden cubes and everything the recesses on the playing boards for all the bits to fit in is fantastic it's a great idea it worked really nicely you know there's no oh I not that oh I not that type thing going on so that's really good component wise the minis were all very nice as well um, nicely made nice components you know component wise there was really nothing to talk to argue with and the artwork was all really nice as well okay I do hope you've enjoyed this and if you have please do check out the rest of my videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family and do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.